welcome to the chair. My name is Amy Bauman and this is our weekly teaching. We come together each week, unpack what chair we're sitting in, look at God's word, apply it to our lives, hopefully become more encouraged and more like Jesus. But thank you so much for being here today and for joining us. And if this is your first time joining us, just a very special welcome to you. I have an interesting thing that I want to talk about today, kind of a question. What is your truth? I think for me, as I struggled for a lot of years not knowing what my truth is, this is something that I am really adamant about, making sure that I know what's true, that I'm looking at my truth, which is God's Word, and that I am sharing that with other people. And when we look at today and the world and what truths truths are being presented to us, we really have to have this sharp discernment to understand what our truth really is and make sure that it aligns with God's word. And so I want to look at that today. I want to look at a couple of examples of how um, there, were, there was information that was presented, right, and what people believed, and yet it wasn't true. And I think as we look at today's world, as we look at the Bible and navigate living in the end times, that we have to make sure we're aware of the different truths that are coming at us and to make sure that it's only God's truth that we're following and believing no matter what. So we're going to look at that today. We're going to talk about that. But before we get started, let's open with prayer. Father God, I thank you. I thank you for today. I thank you that we can come together as a body of believers and learn about your truth and that we can apply that to our lives. And so I just pray, Holy Spirit, we invite you into this time that you will open up our hearts and our ears for your truth, that I will speak your truth with love. I just pray for a fresh anointing and that let it be your words, Lord. We love you and praise you and thank you. And ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So this topic of truth, it really brought me back to when I was um, probably 10 years old, uh, going to this church in Kentwood, Michigan. And we all got to watch this video. And it was an end times video and how what was happening during tribulation and the people that were lining up to get the mark of the beast. And this movie um, really shook me to the core. And the question though that I came out of it um, after watching, one of the questions was how? How come so many people lined up to get the mark of the beast? Um, where was the truth, right? And, and why did they think that it was okay and that it was something that they had to do? And so now um, that I'm you know, 40 some years later, thinking about uh, the Bible, thinking about the times that we're living in, thinking about the different truths that come at me and my family and my children and my grandkids and everyone else. How do we know what our truth is and how do we navigate that? And I think that um, that's probably why the Lord has given me um, kind of this motto uh, to stand behind is speaking truth with love. And I want my words always to be God's truth, spoken in a loving and caring way, and that that is something that I strive for, is to make sure that we know what our truth is. But how? How can we know that, right, if we're gauging against all of the different information that's coming our way on a daily basis. So I wanted to give you three examples of um, times when we th the, the thought was that it was truth, but it really wasn't. And how do we discern then? Um, and how do we gauge that with everything that's coming in our direction? So this story actually came across on social media and I, and I looked it up and verified it and it really kind of struck me as this is, this is one way, right? Um, when we're presented with a truth, what we're going to believe. So in 1997, 
14-year-old Nathan Zahner got 43 out of 50 ninth graders to vote in favor of banning dihydrogen monoxide. What is that? It's water. The hoax was a science fair project which he titled, How Gullible Are We? He not only won the science fair, but also inspired the term zonerism, defined as the use of a fact to lead a scientifically ignorant public to a false conclusion. Now, this to me, I love this visual imagery, right? If we want to set this aside of people today who can be ignorant in the ways of the Bible, right? Because they haven't read the Bible fully or they don't understand it or it's not their truth. How can they be led down a path and be given blatant information to make them believe something else when God's word is what's true? They can use this scientific fact and come to a false conclusion. And so when you look at the difference between religion and science, what are we believing when we're presented facts that is untrue against what God's word says? It's challenging. And it leads me to another example right? How much chocolate does it take to fool a journalist? Turns out not much. July 2015, Peter Onikin and Diana Lobel, a pair of documentary filmmakers from Germany, and John Bohannon, a biologist and science journalist based at Harvard, revealed that they had tricked millions of people, including their peers at the Daily Star Cosmopolitan's German site and the German and Indian sites of the Huffington Post into believing chocolate could help them lose weight. Now, that is um, something that I would like to believe, but I know that it's false. But they tricked millions of people into that by using all of this information and putting it all over the news and whatnot that chocolate could help them lose weight, and millions of people believed it. How is it being presented? And what are we thinking is true? Even though probably in our heart of hearts, we know that it's not, but we want to believe it anyways. And then lastly, what would happen if the United States were about to be hit by nuclear weapons? Hopefully, the government would provide some warning through the federal alert system, but that system hasn't always been put in place, and it hasn't always worked. And for over 40 minutes on February 20th, 1971, a test gone awry led to widespread panic that America had been plunged into nuclear war. Now, I was only one year old at the time, but maybe some of you people that are just a little bit older than me might remember that back in 71, for 40 minutes, we thought that we were under nuclear attack. Again, something was presented. We believed it to be true. And that was our truth. And So I I bring this up to say how many things are presented to us today where we are believing them to be true, yet it's contradictory to God's word. And so we need to know what is our truth. We need to ask ourselves that question. I think sometimes on a daily basis, okay, Does this line up with God's word? Is this what I'm going to believe? Or am I going to follow everyone else? So I pulled a couple of Bible verses. um, And I think for this first one, 
when we're, we go right to the end and go right to Revelation and we need to ask ourselves, do we believe this? And, and knowing that this is going to happen, are we going to prepare ourselves to question what the truth really is? And it, it comes back to what I said I watched when I was 10, 11 years old at church about the end times and the tribulation and about the mark of the beast. Revelation 13, 11 through 18. Then I saw a second beast coming out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, but it spoke like a dragon. It exercised all the authority of the first beast on its behalf and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose fatal wound had been healed. And it performed great signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to earth in full view of the people. Because of the signs it was given power to perform on behalf of the first beast, it deceived the inhabitants of the earth. It ordered them to set up an image in honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. The second beast was given power to give breath to that image of the first beast so that the image could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. It also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads, so that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of its name. When we take information in like this and we add some things that help us get a little bit confused, when we talk about dragons and beasts and things like that, sometimes it feels a little bit more like fantasy. But if you were to take those same things and instead of this dragon or this beast was actually this person in a human form, and, and how we have in the past, right, put up these human statues, these people that we've honored, even back in the olden days in the Bible times that these images have been brought up and said, hey, I need you to bow down to this image, or I need you to bow down to this golden calf, or I need you to bow down and worship me because I'm the king. Look at the stories and, and what we've read in the Bible where people have done that. People have joined the, the bandwagon and said, yeah, we got we to gotta bow down to this golden calf or we got to bow down to King Nebuchadnezzar or we got to bow down to this guy over here. We've already done it. We've already done it. And so there's a lots of symbolism in the Bible and imagery that maybe we can't understand, but there are things here that scream out to me what we need to be aware of, right? First of all, that, that people were forced to receive a mark on their hands, that this, this thing came so that all could worship him and that he came to deceive the people. These are the kinds of things that need to stand out to us. And we need to be aware and, a, and awake and alert as to our truth. Matthew 24, 4 through 14. Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places, and these are the beginning of birth pains. Then you'll be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from their faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. 
My friends, I read this scripture today and it feels like we're there. I, I've, we've seen the birth pains. We've seen the growing pains. We've seen things that are happening. And now we see this overwhelming wickedness that's, that's spreading like wildfire throughout the world. And we see how people are treating each other in this lack of love. And we see this theme, right, of, well, let your truth be your truth and my truth be my truth. Let's all decide what our own truth is. And when we're doing that, right, and we're looking away from God's word, well, then we're going to be standing on a, a shaky foundation. We're not going to know what to look for or who to believe. And so we're going to be asking ourselves, well, what truly is our truth? And is it aligned with God's word or is it aligned with social media or is it aligned with the political view or is it aligned with this person over here? What is my truth? And Jesus is telling us to beware and be awake and alert. First John 2, 26 through 27. I am writing these things to you about those who are trying to lead you astray. As for you, the anointing you received from him remains in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things, and as that anointing is real, not counterfeit, just as it has taught you, remain in him. That word remain means a lot to me because I think about what the enemy does to distract us from Jesus, to distract us from his truth. And one of the hardest things for us to do is remain, to remain in him, in Jesus Christ, to remain in that truth, to let that truth remain and stay at the forefront of our mind when we are bombarded by all these other things every single day. So when we talk about this battle, right, this battle against the enemy, this battle to know our truth, one of the biggest things that is said to us in Ephesians 6, when we look at the full armor of God and what we need to put on to fight in the battle, is to stand firm then with a belt of truth buckled around our waist. It is this belt of truth that keeps all the other pieces of armor in place. It's at the center of us, right? This belt of truth. And that's what we need to grab onto. That needs to be one of the most important things that we carry around each day is our truth. And what is that truth? God's word. And then Psalm 25, 5. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior, in my, and my hope is in you all day long. Hope. Where is our hope today? If we're hoping in the things of this world, we're going to have failure and we're going to lose our hope, right? Because that Every day, the world is changing. If we're hoping in people, that isn't going to happen because people will fail us. Because we're all broken, right, and need Jesus. And operating in that brokenness, people are bound to fail us, even if they don't want to. But if we hope in Jesus, if we remain in his love, if we remain in his truth, then we can hope in him no matter what happens to us. And no matter what we used to believe, or maybe what you have believed up until about 30 seconds ago, you can believe in God's word. You can stand and hold that truth in the palm of your hand, right? That's God's word. That's our truth. And that's what we need to hold on to. And that's what we need to believe moving forward into the unknown, into the end days, into these uh, times that are coming, this, this tribulation, when, when all of the foundations of this world are going to be shaken. But what will stand firm? 
God's truth. And that's what we need to hold on to today. We can see from past mistakes that we can be detoured, that we can have things come to us that we can believe to be true, that we can be taken off track and distracted away from God's truth. We read that today in three different examples, and we can see that in the past in the Bible. But what is going to be our truth today moving forward? What are we going to tuck away in our hearts and stand on to navigate this world, these end times, God's truth? I pray that if you're questioning your truth today, that you will look to this, that you'll be reminded of this, and that God will reveal to you what is true and that he will realign your heart with his word. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for your truth. And I thank you, Lord, that your truth sets us free. And so I just pray, Lord, as we are facing all of these different things that are coming our way, all of these supposed truths, these things that can deceive us and confuse us and make us question, that we will undoubtedly refer back to your word that that will be our truth, our our true north, our solid foundation, and what we need to stand on today. Help us, Lord, to have sharp discernment for wisdom that we will be able to know what is true and we will be able to look to you as our source. I just pray for each person watching, each person listening today, that they will know that you are what's true and that we will stand on that solid foundation. We love you and praise you and thank you and ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. If you are looking for more truth, if you are looking for resources to help you realign your life with God's word, then you're going to want to make sure to follow the For His Glory Ministry Facebook page, Amy Bauman slash For His Glory Ministry. It starts off each day with a daily devotional at 6 a.m. We have lots of different resources, uh, including the Wednesday teaching, uh, Sunday's Truth in the Streets, a weekly Bible study that airs on Wednesday live on Facebook. We also have a For His Glory Ministry app that you can download that connects you with all of those resources and will help you on your journey of truth. So thank you so much for being here today, for joining us, and until next time, until we can be together again, be blessed.